So I watched this film twice, Achara watched it once. Yes. And the second time I watched it was at Universal City IMAX. I had no idea walking into this movie that it was a one -er, that it was supposed to look like one take. And so in the first 20 minutes of the film, first off, I, I, I want to talk about this freely. So if you haven't watched it yet, just go watch the movie and come back. It's a great movie. Yes. It's, it's incredible for a multitude of reasons, but I want to talk as freely as possible without having to worry about, you know, I didn't realize in the first 20 minutes that it had cut because I didn't know what kind of movie I was watching. I didn't know that that was the film. And I was like, how long is this shot going for? And I kept like waiting for it to cut, like to literally like be an obvious cut. Uh huh. And, and so I was just kind of floored. I'm like, how are these actors holding on to all these lines? Like, how big is this set? How are they doing this? How are they lighting this? How are they shifting the aperture? Because like sometimes the aperture is wider to account for a lot of things being in focus and then the aperture is like, right, I'm looking at you and this is out of focus. The aperture was dynamic as far as I could tell. And so I was just so floored by everything. And then I realized, okay, this is the entire film. Yeah. And I have to accept this because I'm getting distracted by the style. So I have to just accept that almost as ancillary, as background. And then I got more into the movie. It's one of those things where I haven't had an experience like this since Whiplash, where I'm like, I really have no idea what's gonna happen at any point in this movie, because it's, first off, it's a war movie. It kept building up that drama really, really well. And like anything could happen anytime. And you thought someone was gonna die, he didn't die. You thought this person was gonna die, and then he did die. And it's like, you had no idea what to anticipate, right? And the screen went black, and you're like, what is happening in this movie? Is he dead? Is the movie over? We got an hour left of runtime. Who's the film gonna follow now? You know, yeah, it's yeah. like, are you going through all these thoughts? And so, that first experience was unparalleled. Like I haven't had an experience like that in years. Like I said, nuts since Whiplash. So coming out of this movie, I thought it was my new favorite film. I thought it was like as good or better than Whiplash for me. And so I'm gonna leave it at that for now and give you an opportunity to hog the mic. Go ahead. <laughs> I thought it was a fantastic movie. I was actually kind of scared going into it just because of the subject matter. I thought that it would really upset me, which it did, but it was just so beautifully done. And I think that the choice to do it as one take was really cool because you are literally following these two characters on a journey and as they're dynamically moving through the terrain and getting to their destination you are following them as well and it gives you that sense of kind of really being there as well it's just kind of one point of view and so there were really cool things that happened where the camera's looking in the direction of one character and then something happens off screen and it's like and it whips around and you're like what the what just happened and i feel like that kind of reflects what it must have been like to be in war stuff's just happening all around you and one second someone's there and the next second your buddy's dead i really really appreciated that sam mendes has such a great talent for showing beauty next to the mundane yeah. or beauty next to things that are just downright awful right. while a lot of the stuff in the movie was just really harrowing like all of the dead bodies and like the set design was amazing yeah like I agree. so much attention to detail the costumes the way the trenches looked everything was just so spot on and so there's that ugliness of war and then the beauty of the area all around them and then like yeah that's like, that's typical of war films though yeah of, of good I mean, war films well because you need that right because you, like you said you're yeah. you're ratcheting up the tension and you're just like <gasps> and then there were moments of comedy like light-hearted randomly moments. like you weren't expecting yeah. it but it wasn't it wasn't like out of left field no it was but it was like it was appropriate it was appropriate yeah with like the like gallows humor yeah and then there were moments of tenderness right. and loveliness and and i just thought it was really well executed and the acting was there's a lot of beautiful set design i mean you have to give so much credit to all the extras and ancillary yes. talent that trained for this film for six months and the timing of all that is is absolutely bananas and then the set design everything was mapped out in advance apparently by you know I I, I don't by the set designers and the DP and all that like they had this all figured out they have to before production happened yeah right? I saw a little bit of behind the scenes and it was just impressive what they had scoped out in advance uh, all the prep that went that was involved Sam Mendes wrote in the script like this is gonna be a one shot it's gonna be made to appear to look like one long take while I was watching it at one point this is my first viewing at one point I was like 
This is almost like a video game in a way, like this non-cut thing is what it feels like when you're playing a game. Come to find out, he was inspired to shoot this way because of watching his sons play Red Dead Redemption 2. Wow. I'm like, okay, well, that makes sense. The acting in here is so, so strong. It's not just, act, you know, doing the these performances, but like doing these performances like theater while you've got this camera and all this stuff going on. Cause it's like, it's one thing to have a controlled environment like a stage, yeah. like a theater stage, but you're in this very dynamic environment with these pages of dialogue or pages of action to keep into, in, in mind. Yeah. And, and you're doing all this at once. Like if one person messes something up, like that could literally destroy the take. Well, yeah, yeah, you literally have to go back to one. Right. So when I went to watch it the second time, I started to see the seams a little bit more and I was like, oh, it's like that first viewing. There's nothing that can compete yeah. with that first viewing because you don't know what's going to happen. That tension that you feel, even when nothing follows, there's nothing that can compete with that in that first viewing. And you're not, you're not, I mean, for me, I wasn't thinking about the seams of how these edits were working together. And then I started to see it work together and I was like, oh, damn it. I don't want to notice that. I don't want to see all that. And what made my second viewing worse was these stupid ladies behind me kept yapping the whole time. I'm like, shut your freaking yaks. How are you, how can you possibly have a giggly gaggly conversation during this epic war film. And I think epic is the perfect word for this film. Yes. Because like, even for that first shot when they're walking from the tree, what I noticed right away is everything happening beside them. And that's the thing I love most about this film is all the details. Yes. Because of the way it's shot, you have to consider everything that's in the frame even more. The audience is gonna see all this. It feels atmospheric in the strongest way possible, yeah. right? You can see all this stuff. It literally feels like you're part of this. But the thing about it is, to what you were saying, something happens off screen and the camera pans over it. I don't feel like the camera panned over to the action enough, particularly in one moment is where I noticed it. Uh, I'd have to watch it a third time to verify this feeling. I had to watch it a second time to verify my feeling of it being my favorite movie of all time, which it's not. It's really high up there still. There's this moment in the in the night sequence when um, Schofield. Scro Schofield, he's running around. I don't know what's the, the Nazis are shooting overhead, but these like these lights, it's what's giving illumination to the scene at all. And he's running around and he looks up as this stuff is firing overhead. And the whole point of shooting it this way is Sam Mendes wanted you to feel it from their perspective and you're right there with them. But the thing about it is if he looks up, the camera has to look up. The camera has to see what they're seeing. And I know that feels like a nitpick. It frustrated me a little bit because I'm like, if this was cutting, we would see what he's looking at, right? But we don't need to cut to see what he's looking at. You can literally just pan up. I mean, obviously that's more money, that's more effects, but I feel like it was needed for moments like that. That was a little nitpick. Another nitpick of mine was when, whenever characters jumped down into something, like in uh, the first 30 minutes, they jumped down into a trench next to the body that uh, Schofield, Schofield, he puts his hand into the Nazi. Yeah. That little, that gross moment. I felt that the, oh my God, I felt it so hard the first time I watched the movie. Cause he like cuts his hand, right? And yeah. I'm, I'm immediately thinking like, how did they do that? How did they do that? Like uh, now I'm going, okay, well, obviously with how many cuts they did, cause I didn't notice that they were cutting so much. Yeah. With how many cuts they did, now it makes more sense. Cause I'm thinking they shot for 20 minutes and then yeah. there's this moment when he messes his hand up. I'm like, how did they do that? And then he puts his hand in the body, it's gross. So what I'm trying to say is they jump into the trench and there's like this weird effect. The camera goes into the trench with them and it doesn't shake at all. I disliked that it didn't shake. The stuff leading up to the waterfall. Okay, so he, he, he confronts this Nazi and they look at each other. And I love that moment where they look at each other like, is this real? It's real. And they fight and he puts his hand on his mouth. He's, he's like, shh, shh. And the guy's like, ah, and he starts shouting, he's babbling in German. They fight in the shadows, that was cool. But then after he chokes his ass out, he doesn't take the knife to stab the drunken soldier. Why not? And is it is it is this my thinking because of all the Call of Duty games I've played? Like, is that why I'm thinking like this? Is, is, this, is it realistic that he wouldn't try to stab this dude when the very next thing that's gonna happen is he's gonna sh call out to all the Germans, which the dude does. So he's running, he's running hard, and then he jumps into the waterfall. And then when he jumps into the waterfall, it like go, it moves with him. When he falls down the other water, I'm sorry, he jumps into the water. When he goes down the waterfall, camera looks down and he drops, which is obviously a CGI version of him because they wouldn't actually do that to the actor. And instead of the camera going underwater with him, the camera just stays there. And so that's another moment where I was like, oh man, how cool would it have been if it like actually went under the water with him? Well, I, I mean, I feel like those are artistic choices, right? It's still giving that one shot feeling. But the point of the one shot is that you're with them. And so I need to feel like I'm drowning 
with him. I mean, okay. That's that's what I mean. I mean, this is these are minute complaints. This is a fantastic movie. I love it still. These are things that I feel like could could have just taken it that much further. That's all I'm trying to say. Even though I watched it uh, once before, when it came to that third act of like the part where he's running across the field with the first wave, I felt my heart pounding. My 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 I was getting goosebumps again. I'm like, this is so epic. You think you've gotten the scope of it, right? You think you've gotten the scope of it, and then it backs up further and backs up further, and it gets knocked down twice. I'm like, oh my god, this is so crazy. It was so well yeah. orchestrated as well. Different people were falling over at different times. Yeah. Different soldiers were getting shot. It was incredible how they did that. So beautiful as well. <laughs> it was one of those things where it was like chilling, but also like, wow, how stunning was that? Now you had some comments about the Englishness of the movie. Yes. I feel like World War One and World War Two are very close to British people's hearts because you walk around London and you can still see certain buildings in London which have gun marks in them from the war. So many people had family members that fought in World War One, World War Two. I did. That's why this movie hit me really hard. And there was just something about the way that the soldiers were, that very stiff upper lip mentality. After Blake is killed and Schofield's clearly shaken up and then Mark Strong comes to him and he's like, it's best not to dwell on these things. And I was like, wow, that's, that's really British. Uh, to just be like, you know, just keep calm and carry on. Don't think about it, just do your job, just keep moving forward. But it's also a very, like, army mentality as well. We'll just... Yeah. We'll deal with that later. I think it's called says, PTSD. I think it says it doesn't do to dwell or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Do you, it doesn't do to dwell. And then also Richard Madden, who played uh, Lieutenant or Lieutenant Blake, when he heard the news about his brother, just the way that... Oh, yeah, down, that was amazing. I was that like, made me cry twice. I know, my heart just broke for him because he did that so well, that initial excitement of, oh my God, is my brother here? You know my brother. And then, oh no, my brother's dead. And then he's just trying to, you know, be a man mm -hmm. and hold it together and he's falling apart. That was just incredible. One of the great weapons, no pun intended, of this movie was also the music. The use of the music was powerful and it's very classical in a way. I feel like there were moments in this film that felt very classical, like it felt like a film from the 50s in the best way possible. There were two moments in particular that I would call out to, which is they cross no man's land and they're about to enter the German trenches and the music is building up to a crescendo and then just cuts out as they point and there's no one there. That to me felt like a film right straight out of the 50s or 60s right. in terms of the way the music was done. I love the music in this movie. It was so well done. When um, they get their orders to go and then um, Blake just goes and the music picks up. It's a perfect soundtrack because, or score, because it doesn't feel like all the way classical. It has a modern rhythm to it. Right. Because they, I don't know what instruments they were using because I'm not, I'm not a musician. The music was composed in such a way that made you feel Energy. I yeah. loved that energy, and it didn't feel like it was taking over the film. Um, what was the other thing? Oh, in the night sequence, when he's running, even though I com just complained about it, when he's running away with everything he has in his body, when he's running away, and you see his face, and he's just like for dear life, just running. Yeah. There was something about that shot with the music and the composition of it that felt like I was watching Lawrence of Arabia or something. Like I don't know if that shot's in Lawrence of Arabia, but like it, it felt like something from that era in terms of the way it was filmed. Then there was a Spielberg moment where he he jumps, he like he's running away from the dude. I think it was the dude who he he saw and it was like, are we friends? We're not friends. Yeah. And he chases him. Why he didn't try shooting him, I don't know, but he ran. And he was running away from the Nazi, and then he um, the Nazi falls down, which is kind of cool. Dude kicks open this little thing to get to the French lady. And when he goes into the little flap, I, I guess it's like a doggy door or something, or the, whatever. It's like a window, I don't know. Yeah, but he's, he's a little bit underground, and he looks, and you hear the guy run. That's another moment where it's like, I'm not sure why we weren't looking at the guy running past, but it was good enough to see his perspective. That's a very very Spielberg thing. You didn't ne necessarily need to see the German soldier running. You just saw him and his reaction to it, and that was good enough. The moment with the French lady, I liked that quite a bit. Yeah, that was lovely. I thought that was nice. I'm really, really happy that they didn't kiss, because I felt like there was a moment where they could have. They could have just thrown it in there for some stupid reason, because that's what movies do, yeah. and they didn't put it in there. I'm so happy about that. Yeah. You commented on how 
everything kind of came full circle with the milk. There were so many payoffs in the movie. The milk thing, because he finds the, the milk at that abandoned farm and then he has it so he can give it to the lady. And then the lady asking him, oh, do you have any children? Right. He doesn't say anything. And then at the very end of the movie, you find out he does. You find yeah. out he does. And, and that's what he's been holding in his pocket the entire time. I want to give a shout out to George Mackey because I thought his performance was just stellar. All the actors, really, Dean Charles Chapman as well. The performances were just so good, but George Mackey just carried it really well. And he had that restrained acting that, you know, the, the terror, but also the, okay, I have to, I have to get through this and, and the pain. Everything that you probably would have been feeling had you been in that situation, he did that so well. In general, the, the casting was so good and the fact that all the army they were all really young because so many young people yeah. were were fighting in the war i kind of wish that they didn't i mean i love the entire cast so don't get me wrong i thought all the actors included were great but i kind of wish that they didn't have the known the the named actors like the super well-known actors right like benedict like ben, especially colin, benedict colin Firth. Yeah, yeah well no colin firth was the one guy who I accepted because he looked so different. He looked different from anything I'd seen him do before. Like he looked nothing like he did in Kingsman. His voice was familiar, but he looked different enough that I literally had to ask who that was. Benedict Cumberbatch, Mark Strong, like they're just very familiar. And so, at least for me, like I've been paying a, a lot of attention to Mark Strong. So when they show up in the movie, I'm like, that's Mark Strong. And yeah. that's, that's Benedict Cumberbatch. It just takes me out of the adventure of it a little bit because I feel like I'm in a World War I situation up until their faces show up, even though it's a movie. Um, that was on my first viewing. The second viewing, I didn't care as much. Mainly it's Benedict Cumberbatch and Mark Strong that stood out to me. I'm like, okay, I, those are some like strong cameo appearances, right? Yeah. That's a minute grumble. I love how even with this concept, they were able to create a really strong first, second, third act with this movie. Yeah. Right away, you get the objective. And you're not actually sure who your main character yeah, is. Yeah, that was really yeah. cool. Because for the longest time, I thought that the protagonist was going to be Lance Corporal Blake. Right. Because it's his brother. Right. And he's the one that instigates everything. It's a bit of Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. Insofar as it's about a brother. When George McKay is like under the rocks, I was like, well, surely he's dead. Like, there's no way he survived. And then he pulls him up. And there's this moment where he's like, I can't, I can't see anything. He's like, you have to jump, trust me. Just that harrowing experience yeah. of that going through the tunnel and whatnot. That, oh, I don't think I breathed yeah. during that whole sequence. All that stuff was great. And the movie keeps you on your toes the entire time because it's a war situation. When you get off the trucks and he goes towards the bridge and he's like doing that little cat, the, the little parkour thing. I'm like, what's he gonna do? Yeah. And then he gets shot at. I'm like, wow, like this movie, it's very mathematical in how, okay, you're gonna breathe here. Now it's gonna be heart pounding. Now you're gonna breathe yeah. and it's gonna be heart pounding. That moment when he drops, I still don't understand like what happened in that sequence because I watched it twice and I'm like, I don't know if he got shot or not. Maybe it's like you said where the, it was just the the um, blowback of the gun. I forgot, I um, read I read an article. Where he goes down the stairs and knocks out. They said something like he couldn't have been shot in the shoulder because that would really incapacitate you as a soldier. Mm -hmm. So they had, he got shot somewhere else. He got, he did get injured. Anyway, he, he falls down the thing and it cuts to black. The whole theater is like just waiting with anticipation, like what is going on in this movie? Like, is it over? It, and you, you have no idea what's gonna come next. Like literally anything can happen. And you see he's bleeding, he, he's had a concussion, but it's a beautifully made film. Yeah. I mean, it's, this is my favorite film from 2019. I don't know if I can watch it again and appreciate it quite like I did the first time, but I still think I might buy it just to support it, just because I wanna give this particular film more money. <laughs> I want to do what I can to support this kind of movie, these kinds of movies being made, because it is so amazing. And so even if I never open the freaking Blu-ray, uh, I'm gonna buy it anyway, because I love it that much. And I probably would buy it just to watch the behind the scenes and whatnot. Um, yeah, I think that would be a very strong reason. Yeah, so across the board between, you know, the directing style, the, the acting, the writing, the the music, the set pieces, the costume, everything. The emotional the, 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 journey, yeah. oh my God. The Even, you gotta give credit even to like the post-production team of like colorists and whatnot, because it had this, sort of World War One documentary look, even though yeah. World War One wasn't in color. It sort of had this weird, sort of Saving Private Lion, Lion, Saving Private Ryan look, but not really, you know what I'm saying? It just had that sort of old feely look that made you feel like you were back there. I don't know, I, I just, yeah. it was a great movie. One of the best movies ever made, in my opinion. Certainly not perfect, 
but damn, is it come close.